Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of This Ambition. I'm Amukta. And I'm Malak, and today we have two year 13 students with us. Could you please introduce yourselves? My name's Sydney, I'm in year 13, and I'm hoping to go to university in Australia, back home. Um, I'm Hannah, I'm also in year 13, and I'm also hoping to go back to Australia um, for university. All right, so last week we were looking at IB options, and this week we are looking at managing stress and starting off IB. So we want to sort of start by tying that in. What are your guys' IB options and have particular ones been the most stressful or like been super stressful to you? Um, So I do HL English, History and Chemistry and Standard Level Maths AA, Standard Level Bio and Standard Level French B. Um, I think Chemistry has definitely been the most challenging subject for me. Um. (laughs) Honestly, it's just about dedicating yourself to it and knowing that everything, like you're going to be equipped with the skills you need to do well in it. Like if you um, put yourself towards like that goal, like for example, when I started chemistry at the start of IB, I would kind of, my study habits were really bad for it. I would study the night or two before and expect to do well. And obviously in IB, that's not going to happen. Yeah. Like it come, good results come more from hard work than just from, being able to understand the concepts yeah um i'm doing higher level sports science english geography and then standard maths ai um french ab initio and business probably for me the most stressful subjects has been um french just because like it was a lot more difficult than i had anticipated and so as stuff is starting to catch up with me now it's becoming a lot more difficult and yeah I think it's just keeping on top of all of your subjects and making sure like you're not falling behind and stuff um can you name a time where you're like the most stressed and what you did to manage it I think kind of the stress catches up to you like the first time it kind of overwhelmed me was end of year 12 those final exams and kind of just looking at my exam timetable seeing I think I had 13 exams in the space of five days oh god like yeah (laughs) obviously it's not the best feeling but I think just seeing that is very overwhelming kind of seeing like the reality of like what your final exams are going to be like especially because I didn't have to do GCSE exams it's kind of mm-hmm. a bit overwhelming scary for me um but yeah I think stress can like help you set goals and like kind of like help you check back into the work that you need to be doing as well so yeah I agree I was gonna say like our end of year 12 exams is probably like when I was the most stressed because not only did we have like a bunch of exams crammed into like a really short period of time but in like the same week it felt it felt like we also had like our EE deadline and like a lot of TOK deadlines as well so it's just like a really busy time um and as Sydney was saying before like because we didn't actually end up doing our GCSEs because of COVID and stuff like the whole exam um like schedule and stuff is something that we're not necessarily that used to so yeah it's it was a lot and did you guys like have any hobbies or anything like that helped you avoid the stress um I don't know about like hobbies I guess just like making sure that you take time out of your day where you're just not looking like you're not doing work and you're not thinking about work Sydney and I like when we were studying we liked to like go to a cafe and eat and study together and that was good because it gave us like time to do both of the things and so I think it's just coming out with a good balance between like how much work you're doing and how much time you're leaving for yourself yeah I agree and also making sure you set yourself realistic goals like setting yourself unrealistic goals that you know you won't be able to fulfill like isn't gonna be helpful like if I had set myself a goal to come home on a Thursday night and revise for three hours it's not gonna happen like you need to have time to like recover and like let yourself have free time and then that will help you like work harder in the times where you do give yourself time to study if you also give yourself time off and you're not expecting yourself to do more than what you need to do really yeah that's actually one of the things we wanted to talk about I feel like at the start of year 12 we all set these like super ambitious goals like study every day do at least two hours of each subject and stuff like that but realistically that's not possible 
And so when you started year 12, I feel like a lot of these goals are sort of like propagated by fear, you know, just because you're scared, you start thinking of like, you know, what you're going to do to combat that. So what were some of the things when you started year 12 that were really scary? Um, I think one of the scary things actually was in English, you have to do an IO, which is a speech. So speaking for 10 minutes with only 10 dot points, that's something that obviously you don't really you didn't really do at GCSE so it yeah. is like nerve-wracking realizing that that's something that makes up a big portion of your grade and also in HL sciences that was like a massive struggle seeing the amount of content that you have to cover and the speed at which you start going through content like in HL history for me something that we would spend six months doing at GCSE you do it in three weeks and then you're done like that's how fast we're going yeah. yeah, I think at the start of year 12, like, one of the scary things was, like, you realize very quickly that all the courses move very quickly and, like, you go through content at a speed which, like, you would never expect to and so it requires you going home and making sure that whatever you've gone over you understand and, like, because and also, like, the teachers won't, they're not there to make sure that you understand everything, like, that's up to you, it's on you to make sure that you understand everything you're doing yeah i feel like we're feeling that right now i literally just came from a computer science class where we were introduced to our ias and that was the most stressful thing ever he was like come up with ideas in five minutes and i was like i have no clue what i want to do but i think one of the things that has really helped me to think about it is like also in relation to my gcsc journey obviously at the start of gcscs we came in pretty much like blindsided to anything yeah a lot of knowledge that was new but we made it at the end Mm -hmm. so I think like that's sort of giving me comfort the fact that like every journey is going to be hard when you start it and um what is there something that you guys didn't do to like manage stress that you think that we should do like any mistakes that you think you might have made that we could learn from yeah I mean I think the biggest example of my kind of growth with not only of like managing my time effectively but also managing my stress has been in HL chemistry at the start of year 12 I was consistently getting low fives and obviously I was aiming for seven um and that seems like super difficult when you feel like you've studied enough and then you are getting results that you aren't happy with whatever your goal is if you're not happy with your result that's just a universally bad feeling but I think you have to take a step back and look at the ways in which you're managing your time. Are you using stress to your advantage or are you letting it affect you badly? Are you procrastinating and then being stressed because of that? Or are you, weeks beforehand, are you feeling the stress of the upcoming exams, realizing I have to set reasonable goals which will help me achieve what I want to achieve and then kind of managing your time more effectively? Like the best thing you can do is just start everything early start way before you think you actually have to like for my end of year 12 chemistry exams I ended up starting a month before I prioritized chemistry because that was the subject I felt I was doing the worst in and I every weekend I would sit down and I would do past paper questions I would study effectively not waste time reading stuff I would use active revision and that ended up with me getting a seven in my HL chemistry exams at the end of year 12 so I was fulfilling my goal by using my stress to make effective plans basically yeah like what Sydney was saying like making sure that you're using the pre the stress or the pressure that you feel you're under to your advantage like for me the way like in the uh, end of year 12 exams like what I would do is every single day I would write like a list of the things I needed to get done and I made sure that they were like short tasks or like things that weren't going to take up a lot of my time like if it was like finish cue cards for this topic and then once I was able to set not only like realistic goals but actually quite a few because they were small goals I could get done within the day and so I was actually working through all of the revision I needed to do quickly and when I got to the end of the list at the end of the day then I was able to disconnect and kind of let myself have some time to myself and then I knew the next day that if I work through all of my revision I do well then I'm going to get that time again so I think just making sure that you have like planned out what you're going to do. And by like managing your time like that, do you feel that when it came to the exam that you were more prepared, you're less stressed? Yeah, I think so. I think when it came to the exams, I felt more confident because I knew that I had gotten everything done that I needed to and I was the most prepared that I could have been for those Mm -hmm. exams. And so then going into that exam, it takes off 
you just feel like, well, whatever happens in this exam, I've done the most I feel like I could. And then regardless of what result you end up getting in those exams, it takes that fear of like what could have been away because you know that you've done the best that you could of. Yeah, and if you've just like, for a subject like maths, the questions can be really tricky to understand, even if it's like a method that you know how to do. If you can't like connect the dots in your head and you're overwhelmed in the exam, like you won't be able to do it, even if like you look at the mark scheme and it's really easy. If you've studied effectively and like use the stress to your advantage, you can go into the exam and know, I know how to do this question. It's just a matter of me working out how to do it like but I'm going it's not going to be something I haven't seen before but then if you know that you've revised badly and you haven't covered the whole course it just will overwhelm me thinking I've missed this I don't know how to do it if you know basically it's just confidence and knowing that you know like that sounds kind of stupid but that is honestly it helps so much like you have to have the confidence in yourself that you can do all the questions that they give you the IB wants you to succeed basically Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think like figuring out, you know, your revision habits and knowing what works well for you will definitely help, you know, like put, like avoid you being, help you avoid being <laughs> in a stressful situation. I remember we got this talk by like Lanterna Education. Yeah. They were like, do you really work better under pressure or do you just not work unless you're under pressure? I was like, that's a good point. Yeah, <laughs> And so just thinking about your habits and working can definitely help you like curb stress because mm-hmm. you can think about what situations cause you to feel stressed and then just avoid those. So do you guys have any like final tips, maybe like revision techniques or literally anything about IB that you'd like to share? Honestly, three words, do your coursework <laughs> and just do it early. Honestly, it's the best feeling. I finished my TOK exhibition like two months before it was supposed to be done. Mm-hmm. It was just a massive weight off my back. Having your extended essay planned and ready to go, it's it makes your life so much easier in year 13 because right now, I think this week, almost everyone, regardless of what classes they're taking, they have three exams plus a maths IA deadline all in the same week. So just having that stuff done beforehand it makes your life so much easier. And if you do HL English, do your HL essay early. That's my advice. (laughs) Yeah, I agree. I think get your coursework and your IAs done as quickly as you possibly can, especially kind of like in the start of and middle to year 12 when things aren't that busy. Like that's when you should utilize your time to do your extended essay, do your TOK, you know, to, to as much as your ability as you can, get that stuff done. Because then when it comes around to it, like term one of year 13, and you have so much less to be doing and you can really start to focus on doing well in your exams, like that is such a weight off your shoulder and such a relief. So if you can stay on top of that, I think that would be my one tip. Yeah, and also if you end up doing it earlier, your teachers will be more able to help you. Like if you're going to your teacher two days before the deadline asking for help, obviously you're not going to be able to improve as much or get as much help as if you've gone two months beforehand, like the year beforehand. Like I started my extended essay really early and I got lots of advice from my teacher who has ended up being my extended essay mentor, like a lot more than you would normally get just because I was on top of it. And year 12 is when you have free time to do stuff like that. Yeah, and I think as much as we've talked about, you know, using stress to push you in this podcast episode, obviously stress does have negative aspects and we have a wonderful counseling team at our school so at any point if you feel like stress is taking over your life in a way that isn't pushing you then that's a really good time to like step back talk to someone about it and get some professional help yeah yeah everyone who i know that has spoke to the counselor said they're really amazing and if it's ever something that you need to do like don't hesitate to go and visit them all right thank you so much for tuning in and listening to this episode And thank you for the year 13s for being here with us. All right. We hope to see you next time. Bye. Bye.